Hello, it's James from Autosolve. I'm going to take you through navigation of the Diagnostic Assistance. Um, front page, or the home page as we call it, contains these four boxes. On this side, you've got I want to fix a fault, and behind each one of these icons lives information relating to fault finding. When I've selected a box over here, I've got ABS, anti-lock braking systems connected. We've presented three boxes on this side. Uh, they are learn about, so if you don't know anything about the system, you want to come in and get a refresher or um, some some information that supports your knowledge and understanding that's the box then you've got character test where if i know i've got a component in trouble that's relating to abs fault i can come over here select the test and go and enter the test or the bottom we've got uh, more expert level mode you know what you're doing exactly you just want to make a comparison against a known good sample uh, and this is where you'll find that information um, the icons on this side are priority order rated, which means normally they're listed alphabetically. So if I reset the fault list, we go A, B, C, D, and, and so on. If I should select, um, in this case instance, DPF fault, and then I select a temperature sensor to do a test on, the software knows that you've entered and used that particular um, part of the function. And what it will start to do then is prioritize that. So where A, B, C, D, DPF should be down here. Because we've clicked it and used it, the software's intelligent algorithms know what software um, functions you're using and they prioritize this list of things you can check by the number of operations or times that you've used it. So this enables the software to learn your habits and then to adjust itself to meet um, the information you need more often. This enables the software to self-select the, the icon, self-sort the icon, sorry, to present you with the relevant information. We have another topic on search, find, favorites and my notes, which is another way of sorting through information, which uh, you, you probably should take a look at too. Let's go back to ABS fault. So in ABS fault, I'm going to say, I don't know anything about ABS or ESP. This is a linked topic because we've got ABS and ESP linked together. So we've clustered that in the get ready info. If I click anti-lock braking systems, it gives me a linear, more document style information, which uh, I can run down through and read and learn and understand all about ABS systems, including pictures and diagrams um, and, and words of describing the key functions. I've also then got carrier to test. So if I know I've got a component problem, I can say steering angle sensor, brake pedal sensor, whichever one, active wheel speed sensors. I'm going to click on this one at the bottom. When I click on this, it loads the familiar component test page, and this gives me information about the component and how it works. Uh, stuff I need to know before I get testing, including any relevant fault codes, master tech notes, that type of thing. Again, we show that in some more detail in another video. Uh, and then we've got test information and conditions. How do I need to test it? And also a little connection of how we hook up to the sensor. And then we've got information on waveforms and uh, scan tool data and multimeter information. So that's in the I want to test section. And then finally, if you're expert level mode, you know exactly what you're doing. You know all about the system and all you want to do is see this comparison is we can click on um, a sensor output waveform it will show me then a waveform to compare what I've got on my my own oscilloscope which will enable me to do that sort of level of comparison to tell you whether it's it's good or, or not good otherwise we can look at um, the data in a slightly different way so if we don't want to come in and the I want to fix a fault section if you click on content it will show you the some of the content uh, listed in a linear or book style format for instance if we click uh, basic electrics here are the topics that we can use uh, and we can go to power management and in the power management section it will talk all about um, fuses, relays, um, smart energy monitoring systems, that type of thing. So we can scroll down and read the data that's in the in the book style format of information. I can click back. <clears throat> when I've read through all of the sections I've got an end of section test which is a quiz which is going to confirm your understanding of the key content that exists within that section. I've also got um, guided and the guided fault finding enables me to look through key component test areas so if I want to dive in and do a component test I can come in here click the chassis petrol diesel or body system find a component click on the component get to sensor checks 
Also in here we've got example worksheets which help you record the data that you've taken from the car to present with the customer's evidence. And we've also got some top 10 tips on testing. In this section we've got the familiar scroll bar button. So we scroll through, find the component we want, click on it and it takes it to a component test. We've also got um, component test procedures. So you may be in body section but you may have a CAN circuit testing conundrum. So we can click on that and it will take me through to CAN bus circuit fault testing and give me some guidance about test and measurement there. If I go back, it should take me back to the component test page and uh, I can go uh, show you the next section, which is diagnostics. In diagnostics, we've got um, uh, test topics, flow charts and diagnostic procedures. If we have a quick look at flow charts, we've got flow charts here, which um, enable us to run through process and procedure. Perhaps if we're lacking a bit of inspiration, we want some guidance. This is the place to come. We've got a flow chart, which is um, again linked to test information. So for instance, this is a diesel a system that doesn't start properly. Uh, cranks but fails to start. So we can look at the test list here. We can select any one of these icons, check for an adequate fuel pressure rail signal sensor. That's an interesting and easy one to do. If I click on that, it takes you through the component test. And then uh, if that's okay, are the injectors being triggered? This will take me through to a library of injectors. So I select the injector type that I've got here click on it and that takes you through to comparison page so I can check the injectors are being triggered by the ECU as we would hope. Uh, if I go back again then we've got things like um, if they're not being triggered check the cam and the crank sensor so again these links take me through to component test or on this side I can check things like fuel quality. If I click on the fuel quality test it runs me through a process and procedure for checking and evaluating the quality of the fuel which could be at the root cause of the problem of your non-start. So that's in the diagnostic section. And then finally we have library where we have oscilloscope waveforms and scan tool data clustered in a library for you to come in and do comparison against the vehicle under test.